Okay, today we're going to continue our tour of economics. We started with a macroeconomic view, looking at the different types of economic systems. And today we're going to do a little deeper dive and look at more the individual firm. A big tool to do that, and you've probably heard the terms, are, is the supply and demand curve. And let's try here and take a look and see how many apples are going to get purchased each day. Right. Now, it's very important to understand how we're going to do this. I'm going to ask a question, and the question is very important, and we'll see that in probably the next video. <clears throat> and the question goes like this. If the price of apples is 80 cents a pound, right here you can see 80 cents a pound. If the price is 80 cents a pound, how many apples will buy? Will people buy? <laughs> it's not that the price is 80. It's if it's 80. Well, if it's 80, let's suppose we have, what, uh, 1,300 pounds of apples will get sold. I'll put a little dot here. We have 13... 100 apples that get sold on that day. Let's try now. If the price is 60, how many, 60 cents a pound, how many people will buy? I'm going to say it again. It's not that the price is 60, it's if it's 60. Well, then we got 2,000 pounds people will buy. And we continue, we can think of all the different prices. We did 40 cents. Well, now it's about uh, 2,600 pounds people will buy. And we can do that for every price. We can say for a dollar, how much will people buy? We can say for 10 cents, how much will people buy? And we look at all those things and those things, and we draw a curve. In this case, it looks like a straight line. We draw a line through this. This is how many apples people will buy. Now, there's a lot of reasons people will buy apples at different prices. Right? But this kind of looks and works intuitively. We can say that the lower the price, it's down here, more apples people, the more apples people will buy. As the price goes up, people will buy less apples, okay? So the curve is downward sloping. We call this the demand curve. And let me say this, something that's very, very important. It tells you how much people are willing to purchase at every price. I can't tell you from looking at this curve how many people or how many apples will get bought. All I know is that if the price is 60 cents, people will buy 2,000 pounds of apples. Now, what determines where this curve is in the shape? Well, there's a number of things. Customer preferences. Do I like apples? I, or, or, or am I not interested in apples? Number of buyers. This one is very confusing for a lot of people. It's not how many people actually buy. We're talking about the potential buyers, right? the population, if you will. If the population doubles, I have more potential people that will buy. More people will buy it at 40 cents. More people will buy it at 30 cents, things like that. It's not that I have uh, more people buying it. Looking at this, this is the quantity that gets produced. We tend to use the word demand. You can say this is how many you know, people demand 2,000 apples, but it can be very confusing. I'm going to be very consistent and say, when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about the demand curve, which is different than the amount that actually gets purchased, which is the quantity or the demand. So what else affects it? Obviously, incomes. As people make more money, people are willing to buy more apples. If I make less money or I lose my job, I'm not going to. Good economic terms to know is substitute goods. 
these are things that I might buy instead of this product. Uh, instead of apples, I might buy oranges. So if oranges are cheaper, I'll buy oranges instead of apples. If oranges become very expensive, well, maybe I'll buy apples instead. My demand will go up for apples. Another good term to know is price of complementary goods. Complementary goods are things that we buy together. So, for example, uh, in a grocery store, if hamburger buns. Hamburger buns are typically purchased with hamburger meat, ground beef. If the price of ground beef goes up, people aren't going to buy ground beef, and then they're also not going to buy hamburger buns. So the two go together. Gasoline and cars. As the price of gasoline goes up, people buy fewer cars. Another factor that affects demand is future expectations. If I think there's going to be a pandemic, people are going to run out and buy toilet paper. The demand for toilet paper is going to go up. That demand curve will shift up. All right. Or if I think prices are going to go down on some other product, we use something a little better. Um, then we can also take a look at the supply curve. Again, it doesn't tell us how much people are actually going to make. Now we're looking at this from the viewpoint of the business. How much am I willing to make? Well, if the price, if I can sell it at $40, I'm willing to make a thousand. If I can sell it at 60 bucks, I'll, I'll make 2000. And if I can sell it at 60, 60 cents a pound, if I can sell it at 80 cents a pound, I'll, I'll crank them out. I'll make a lot more. I'll make 3,000 pounds. So, and you can think of this relative to cars or anything else. The more people are willing to pay, the more I can sell the higher price, the more I'm willing to make. So this curve goes up. Right? It's upward slowing, sloping. As the price goes up, people are willing to make more. Well, but again, it doesn't tell you how much somebody's actually going to make. How do I know? What if factors affect this? When you think of the supply curve, anything that affects your costs, anything that affects your costs will affect the supply curve. Another fact, another thing to think about, anything that affects your profits. So my costs and my taxes affect my profits. Those are the two biggies in here. If it affects my costs or my profits, it'll move my curve. If my profits go down, I'm not willing to make as much. If somebody raises taxes, I won't make as much. If somebody lowers taxes, or if uh, I can get robotics and automate, I will make more right? because my costs have gone down. Anything that affects your profits will affect the supply curve. Weather is another one. Weather, you can think of apples. If there's a snowstorm and the apples get frozen, that affects the amount I'm willing to supply. All right. Well, we didn't know from looking at either of the, from, you can't look at this curve and say, well, how many apples do people buy? I can't look at this one and say, how many apples? I can't look at that one. I can't look at this curve and say, how many are people willing to, are actually going to buy? Because it tells me at every price. It can't tell me how much people are willing to make because it tells me at every price how much people are willing to make. So how do I know? Well, I want to look where supply equals demand. They call it the equilibrium price. That's the price at which people are willing to buy. This is important. People are willing to buy everything I'm willing to make. If my price is up here at 80 cents, I'm willing to make a lot. But people aren't willing to buy very much. So I made all of this extra. That's a surplus. You say, well, that's not a good thing. So let's lower the price. Let's lower it down to 40. Well, at 40, look at all the people that want to buy it. 
but I'm not willing to make as much. Why? Because I don't make as much profit. This is the sweet spot. It's the equilibrium price. At that price, everything I make, people are willing to buy. And there's no surplus and no shortage. We're going to continue this in the, the next video.